Hello, my name is Frédéric Nicodem and I am the first author of the manuscript published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology, a comparison of symptom severity and bolus rotation to Chicago classification esophageal pressure topography metrics in ECLF. This is the first study comparing high resolution manometry, esophagram, and symptom score in ECLF. The major modalities utilized to establish the diagnosis of ECLF are the time volume esophagram, the endoscopy, and the esophageal manometry. Both esophagram and endoscopy may be normal in early achalasia. Hence, manometry has become the gold standard for diagnosing achalasia, and high-resolution manometry has improved the accuracy of manometry in detecting early stages of achalasia. We hypothesize that the achalasia subtypes would translate into difference on esophagram before therapy and that improvement of the high resolution manometry study after treatment would be associated with, with improved symptoms and reduced bolus retention. For this investigation, we prospectively recruited 15 non-spastic echelasia patients from the Northwestern University Esophagia Center into two separate cohorts. The first cohort of 25 patients was enrolled based on the new diagnosis of type 1 or type 2 echelasia. The second cohort of 25 treated patients was enrolled based on mapping at pre-treatment type 1 or type 2 agglation. Before treatment, the criteria used for defining type 1 agglation were an IOP higher than 50 mm of mercury and 100% failed peristalsis. Type 2 agglation was defined by an IOP higher than 50 mm of mercury and panesophageal pressurization in more than 20% of the swallows. With post-treatment patients, the same definition were utilized, with the caveat that patients were no longer categorized as having an achalasia subtypes if the post-treatment IOP was lower than 15 mm of mercury. Hence, patients were categorized as persistent achalasia pattern if they had the criteria for type 1 or type 2 achalasia, or as a resolved achalasia pattern, along with the description of the current manometric profile using the Chicago classification definitions. The symptom score used for the study was the ECOV score, which is calculated by grading severity of dysphagia, regurgitation, retrosternal pain, and weight loss from 0 to 3. Patients were then classified as having a good outcome if the ECOV score was lower than 3, or as having a poor outcome if the ECOV score was greater than 3. Our results have showed that in the untreated group of patients, our initial hypothesis was not confirmed. The fragment and echo scores were similar between echelasia subtypes. After treatment, the results were more likely what our initial hypothesis suspected. 15 of the 25 patients had a resolution of the, of the echelasia pattern on high resolution manometry and converted to either absent peristalsis or weak peristalsis. The relationship between the high resolution manometry and esophagram and the treatment outcome showed that IRP was correlated with the post treatment echo score, but showed a weak correlation with the barium colonnade at 5 minutes. The correlation between esophagram and echo score after treatment was not significant. The IRP, the barium colonnade at 5 minutes, and the echo score were significantly lower in patients with resolved achalasia pattern than in patients with a persistent achalasia pattern. Of note, the subgroups of seven patients with a weak peristasis appear to have the best outcome and the lowest colon 8. In conclusion, our finding suggests that high resolution manometry is useful in the evaluation of achalasia after treatment and that normalizing the IRP is associated with a good symptom outcome. On behalf of my co-author, I would like to thank the editors of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology for the opportunity to have presented this video abstract.